neither this, for example, is a group of students from Lumumba. They don't look like students at all. They look more like military, and that's exactly what they were. They were dispatched back to their countries to be leaders of the so-called national liberation movements or to be translated into normal human language, leaders of uh, international terrorist groups. Another uh, area of activity when I was working for the Novosti was to accompany groups of so-called progressive intellectuals, writers, journalists, publishers, uh, teachers, professors of, of, of colleges. He, you can see me here in Kremlin, I'm second on, on the left, with a group of Pakistani and Indian intellectuals. Uh, most of them pretended they don't understand that uh, we are actually working on behalf of the Soviet government and the KGB. They pretended that they are actually being guests, a VIP intellectuals, that they are treated according to their merits and, and, and their intellectual abilities. For us, they were just a bunch of political prostitutes to be taken advantage for various propaganda operations. Therefore, you can see perfectly well the senior colleague of mine on the left doesn't really have that much respect on his face. And myself, with a very skeptical smile, a uh, typical KGB sarcastic smile, anticipating another victim of, of ideological brainwashing. This is how a, a typical uh, conference in Novosti headquarters in Moscow looked like. Uh, the, sitting in the middle is Boris Burkov, the then director of Novosti Press Agency, high-ranking party bureaucrat in the Department of Propaganda. I am standing next to a famous Indian poet, Sumitranandan Pant, uh, he was famous because he was an author, he was the author of a famous poem titled Rhapsody to Lenin. That's why he was invited to USSR and everything was paid uh, by the Soviet government. The pay special attention to number of bottles on the table. This is one of the ways to kill the awareness or curiosity of, of foreign journalists. My, one of my functions was to keep foreign guests permanently intoxicated the moment they land at Moscow airport. I had to take them to the VIP launch and toast to friendship and understanding between the nations of the world. Glass of vodka, then a second glass of vodka. And in no time, my guests would be feeling very happy. They would see everything in kind of pink, nice color. And uh, that's the way I, I had to keep them permanently for the next 15 or, or 20 days. At certain point in time, I had to withdraw alcohol from them so that some of them who are the most recruitable would feel a little bit shaky. This is the first stage of befriending a professor. You can see myself on the left with the same James Bond smile. On, my, on the right is my KGB supervisor, Comrade Leonid Mitrokhin, and in the middle, a professor of political science in Delhi University. The next stage would be to invite him to a gathering of in the Soviet Friendship Society. There he is sitting next to his wife before he is being sent to USSR for free trip. Everything is paid by the Soviet government. He was made to believe that he is invited to USSR because he is a talented, sober thinking intellectual. Absolutely false. He is invited because he is a useful idiot, because he would agree and subscribe to most of the Soviet propaganda cliché and when he is coming back to, to his own country, he is going for years and years to teach the beauties of Soviet socialism to uh, newer and newer generations of his students, thus promoting the Soviet propaganda line. It was the part of the building of USSR embassy, and my supervisors on the left is Comrade Mehdi, an Indian communist, and on the right, Comrade Mitrokhin, my supervisors in the secret department of research and counter-propaganda. It has nothing to do with either research or contra-propaganda. Most of the activity of that department was to compile huge amount, volume of information on individuals who were instrumental in creating public opinion. Publishers, editors, journalists, uh, actors, educationalists, professors of political science, members of parliament, uh, uh, pre uh, representatives of business circles, most of these people were divided roughly into groups. Those who would tow the Soviet foreign policy, they would be promoted to the positions of power through media and public opinion manipulation. Those who refused the Soviet influence in their own country would be character assassinated or 
executed physically come revolution same way as uh, in the small town of Hue in South Vietnam several thousands of Vietnamese were executed in one night when the city was captured by Viet Cong for only two days and American CIA could never figure out how could possibly communists know each individual where he lives where, where to get him and would be arrested in, under the guidance of, of the Soviet embassy in Hanoi and same thing I was doing in New Delhi to my horror I discovered that in the files where people were doomed to execution there were names of, of pro-Soviet journalists with whom I was personally friendly pro-Soviet? yes they were idealistically minded leftists who uh, made several visits to USSR and yet the KGB decided that come revolution or drastic changes in political structure of India they will have to go why is that? because they, they know too much mm -hmm. simply because you see the useful idiots the, the leftists who are idealistically believing in the beauty of Soviet socialist or communist or whatever system when they get disillusioned they become the worst enemies that's why my KGB instructors specifically made the point never bother with leftists Forget about these political prostitutes. Aim higher. This was my instruction. Try to get into, into uh, large circulation established conservative media. Reach filthy rich movie makers, intellectuals, so-called academic circles. Cynical, egocentric people who can look into your eyes with angelic expression and tell you a lie. These are the most recruitable people, people who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or to uh, suffer from self-importance uh, they feel that uh, they they matter a lot uh, these are the people who KGB wanted very much to recruit but also, to eliminate the others to execute the others don't they serve some purpose wouldn't they be no, the ones they, they rely they on? they serve purpose only at the stage of destabilization of a nation for example your leftists in, in United States all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders they are instrumental in the process of the of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation when their job is completed they are not they are not needed anymore they know too much some of them when when they get disillusioned same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman very pro-soviet leftist was assassinated by his own Marxist Leninist military comrades it's the same pattern everywhere the moment they serve their purpose, all the useful idiots are used either be executed entirely, all the idealistically minded Marxists, or uh, uh, exiled or put in prisons, like in Cuba. Many, many former Marxists are in Cuba, I mean in prison. So most of the Indians who were cooperating with the Soviets, especially without the uh, uh, de Department of, of uh, Information of the USSR embassy, were listed for execution. Uh, and when I discovered that fact, of course I was sick, I was mentally and physically sick. I thought that I, I'm going to explode one day during the briefing at the ambassador's office. I would stand up and say something that we are basically a bunch of murderers. That's what we are. We, it has nothing to do with friendship and understanding between the nation and blah, blah, blah. We are murderers. We behave as a bunch of thugs in, in a country which, which is hospitable to us. A country which, which with ancient traditions. But I, I, I did not, when I started working for the Soviet embassy in India, I, to my horror, I discovered that we are millions times more oppressive than any colonial or imperialist power in the history of mankind. That my country brings to India not freedom, progress, and, and friendship between the nations, but uh, racism, exploitation, and slavery. And, and of course economical inefficiency to this country since I fell in love with India uh, I developed something which by KGB standards is extremely dangerous thing it's called split loyalty when an agent likes a country of assignment more than his own country I literally fell in love with this beautiful country a country of great contrasts but also great humility great tolerance and, and if philosophical and intellectual freedoms my ancestors used to live in caves and eat raw meat when India was a highly civilized nation 6,000 years ago. So obviously the choice was not to the advantage of my own nation. Where and how? One of the reasons, of course, you see, I was in love with India. I mentioned that before. I spoke the languages. 
I socialized with people, and I understood that I had to, to act fast unless I want this beautiful country to be permanently and irreparably damaged by our presence. One of the reasons not to defect was, as you can see, I was living in relative affluence. Who the hell in, in, in the normal mind would defect country? It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result? The result you can see. Most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of, the, uh, of the United States society. And yet these people who've been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock, when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social impulse to defect was Bangladesh crisis, which was described by American correspondents as Islamic grassroots revolution, which is absolute baloney. Uh, there was nothing to do with Islam and there was no grassroots revolution. Actually, there are no grassroots revolutions, period. Any revolution is a byproduct of a highly organized group. Uh, of conscientious and professional um, um, organizers, but has nothing to do with grassroots. In Bangladesh, it was nothing with grassroots. Most of the uh, Awami League party members, Awami League means People's Party, uh, were trained in Moscow in the high party school. Most of the Mukti Fauj leaders, Mukti Fauj is in Bengali means People's Army, same as SWAPO and, and all kind of liberation armies all over the world the same bunch of useful idiots. They were trained at Lumumba University and various centers of the KGB in Simferopol, in, in Crimea, and in Tashkent. So when I saw that India, Indian territory is being used as a, as a jumping board to destroy East Pakistan, I saw myself thousands of, of so-called students traveling through India to East Pakistan, through the territory of India, and Indian government pretended not to see what was going on. They knew perfectly well, the Indian police knew it, the intelligence department of Indian government knew it, the KGB of course knew it, and the CIA knew it. That, that was most infuriating because when I defected and I explained to the CIA debriefers they should watch out because East Pakistan is going to erupt any moment. This effort to educate people in, in, in the spirit of real patriotism, number one, number two, to, to explain them the real danger of socialist, communist, whatever, welfare state, big brother government. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, 